I just want to put in a simple plug for y'all. Hey, hey. Man, shout out to That's a Plug. Make sure y'all tune in, subscribe, and catch the wave while you can. <laughs>
years ahead in the game, probably 10 years down the line. Where do you see yourself 10 years? Be like a great artist in the United States because yeah. I just moved to here two years ago from my okay. country. Where, where are you from? South Korea. Okay. okay. South Korea. My name is Yuno Yang. If you see, and my friend, if you watch this video, just send me a message. Okay, okay, by the way. Live, my man. Trey Carswell, Move Pins Devoted, the one and only. Tell them what Devoted is. Hey man, Devoted is an all full fledged cinematography company. We do everything from motion picture movies to short films, feature films, music videos, commercial, promotional videos, events, you name it, we shoot it. Why shooting? Why, why, why videography? Hey, again, my passion is an actor. You know, I started out as an actor, but I was seeing what was going on behind the camera, like the, the, the camera guy, the, the director, the, 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 the wardrobe department. So I, you know, took my passion in front of the camera, brought it behind the camera, and next thing I know, I'm shooting everything around the world, you know? Yeah. So what's your inspiration for doing it? Like, why? Why, why do you love it so much? What's the main thing that keeps you doing it? My daughters, uh, Mia and Nora, you know, uh, th those are my baby girls. The name of the company is Moot Films Devoted. It used to be Neil Films, that's the name of my daughter, but I had to change the name because it already existed. And I call her Moot when I see her. Okay, okay. So if you ever see me and my daughter, I'm like, come here Moot. So Moot Films Devoted, you know, my passion, my love for my daughter, the film world, being devoted to both of them, and that's how you have it, Moot Films Devoted. Right, right, right. Yeah. What's your goal with your company? Where you want to take it? Oh, we're going Paramount status. Distribution, again, Netflix, Paramount, Fox Studios, Tyler Perry Studios, Moot Films Devoted, Real Studios, it, it, it's coming, it's coming, 100. So where do you think the, the, the what's the vision, or what's, what's the road to video right now? Where's it going to end up? Because we're going, right now we're on right. YouTube, we're right, on Netflix. Right. Basically, HBO, Showtime, that's the thing in the past. That's real. So where are we going? Where do you see it going? I mean, the, the promotion, the, the production world is definitely going the streaming route. I mean, again, my daughter's generation, they're not going to sit down and watch TVs. They probably don't even go to the movies. But they will pull out their tablet, you know what I'm saying, their phone. So I definitely would say, or advice to any up and coming production, definitely try to go to streaming network, you know, the streaming you know, route, because that's the route that production's going. You know, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. It's not really your traditional blockbusters and DVDs. And that's just the, the way of the shift for the world. Yeah. Last but not least, what's one major hurdle you had to overcome to get where you're at now? To have nobody in my family, in my circle, in my circumference being a part of production and wanting to do it, but having nobody to talk to, ask a question to. So you, I had to really throw myself out there in the world that I ain't ever you know, known of or was involved in. And it went easy, but again, perseverance, Consistency, you know, and all praises to Allah, you know, it, it worked out, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it got much more to go, so for sure. Kevin Escobar. Kevin Escobar, tell us a little bit about what's going on in the background, man. All right, so I am um, I am from Guatemala. I'm a Spanish, okay. but I live here in Gettysburg, Maryland. Okay. And um, so what I paint is I paint a little bit of su uh, a surrealism mm -hmm. and uh, mostly like poetry and uh, psychology. Okay. And uh, mostly my paintings are all acrylics on canvas. Okay. How long does it take you to make your average painting? Well, I try not to use more like 20 hours. So it's mostly like hours. that. Yeah, it's mostly take me 20 hours. So some paintings take me 20 hours. Some of it might take me like 10, okay. eight hours, 10, but yeah, that's mostly about the time I take. Got you, got you. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your hair. What's going on with your hair? Well, well, you know. I know it's a story. It, yeah, yeah, no, you. well, I just, I, just, I just like it. I, yeah. just, I just love it. I love it, the way it feels, and I always liked it. Wanted to have dreads, you know, I've been growing in like, uh, probably like two years and a half by now. Right, right. I just love it, you know. Yeah. I, I, and that teal is my favorite color. You can see some yeah, of the painting on teal. So I had to have it in my hair. Gotta have it. Had to have it. Yeah. Tell us about this painting right here. This is the most intriguing painting. Yeah. This this is the most popular. This painting called the vortex. Okay. 
and the vortex is the core of energy, the center of the energy, or or the center of your or, 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 or who you are. So um, I don't know if you have ever me um, meditate, mm -hmm. and when you I meditate, tried, yeah, I, well, I, I'm yeah, too, no, so no, it's no, well, hard to meditate, but I, well, I tried, what, me meditation is just about quiet your, your mind, just quiet keep silent, mind. just stop the stop the thought. That's right. basically what it is. Right. So when you stop the thought and become, you know, in, in, in a calm station of meditation, you are kind of able to reach who who you are within yourself, who the, the energy that this in, in you, you know, like we call it the spirit, but it's this energy that keeps you alive. So when you are in a meditation form, you are able to reach that full energy which is you, and you find any answer to anything. Right. And uh, so in this painting, I have the the. the um, a man, a person that it's so into meditation that he becomes one in one with all nature. Right. And so the That's yellow. You got the, the nature right I got the, the man in the middle. I got the yeah. And so the person right here is himself reaching right. into his soul right. and getting information about anything, right. who he is, what he loves, what he would like to become. It's all those questions that we ask ourselves, like who I am, what I'm doing, I'm doing right, you know. And that's the whole sense of it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So where you want to go with your art? How far you want to take it? Well, it, it's just, it's just, art, it really is, is I want to just move forward into reach more people and to get to know themselves. Like, right. through art, I get to know myself. So reaching other people, I'm trying to, um, to have, to look for a way so that people can find it, identify themselves in the art. Just right. reach more people and to get, Get get uh, get each other to know each other. That's the four point. Okay. Of course, growing into making more art, the more exhibitions, right, you know, right, right. reaching to more people because they motivate people also to paint. Because painting is a really good venue to to do something to enjoy yourself, yeah. you know. Tiff, what's going on? Hey, how are you? All right, tell us what you got going on, what you do. All right, so I have a fundraising and a custom cake business. Okay. So what you see behind us here is the fundraising setup. Uh -huh. And also I do any type of wedding cakes, anniversary cakes, birthday cakes, anything that I can see, I can replicate with cake. How do you match both of those two together, the fundraising and the custom cakes? How do we do that? All right, so, um, well, they really actually bring in two different crowds. Okay. So the fundraising actually services any organization or group of people who wants to raise a little bit of money right. and doesn't really have any money to do it. So I don't charge you to raise money for you. Right. I just ask you for a large audience where I can come sell cake. And yeah. whatever I sell, I give you 30% of what I make at your event. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, the custom cakes, they're just exactly what they are. If you custom need a wet, yep, you need a wedding cake, an anniversary cake, a baby shower, something fancy with pictures on it, or even 3D, or you know, just out of the the box, big fancy, pretty cakes, and they're very affordable. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. So what's the what's the price range on your cakes? From what price to what price? I know it can get extravagant depending on how how luscious and diverse oh, yeah. the cake is, but what's the price range on it? Um, so for the most basic cake, probably about 20 bucks. A double layer of cake that you might sit on your counter in a cake dish, about 20, 25 bucks. It goes all the way up to hundreds because I can stack cakes as high as you want them. So as big as it is. How high have you stacked the highest cake? Um, the biggest I've done is a four tier. Four tier cake? Yeah, but each tier was kind of thick mm. because they get way bigger, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's a lot though. Oh yeah, definitely. Feeding hundreds of people. Um, you know, and um, oh, I'll get you another one. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, oh, yeah. what, what, what made you want to start this? What, what, what brought you into the baking and cakes and all that? Okay, so I began fundraising when I was in college because I went to a small HBCU where we had to raise money to get the extra things. Right. Um, so, I was a four sport athlete and we ran into the same problem with each sport. We right. just had enough money to travel, spend the night, and go play our game, but we didn't have the fancy sweatsuits that all the other state universities had and all of that. So what me and my teammates did was I went, I baked a bunch of cakes, I gave each of my teammates a pan, and we went throughout the stands in the football games and the basketball games, and anytime we were having an event at school, we went selling cake in the name of our, our team. 
and we took donations and sold cake to raise enough money to buy shoes, uniforms, you name it. We even got our stuff embroidered by selling cake. Back then, I was selling it for a dollar a slice. So, a slice. yeah. And how much is it now? Um, now it's one for three or two okay. for five. Okay. So, not bad. Yeah. I'm here live with. Romeo and James Taylor the third. All right, tell them what you got going on, brother. Well, I'm an artist. I paint. Afrocentric art okay. and Afrocentric pictures for our black people. Okay. What made you start painting? Well, I started painting when I was about six or seven. It was, I was, it was a gift that I was, God gave me. I've been doing it. I'm 62 now. I've been doing it from that time to this time. Gotcha, gotcha. What's one tip you can tell up and coming artists that's trying to get out there in the game of artistry and get their stuff published and all that? Love your craft. If you don't have respect for your craft, you don't have respect for your work. Don't even get into it. If you can't draw or paint a picture every day, you're not an artist. I'm back, I'm back. So, um, where you from, brother? I'm from Arlington, Virginia. Arlington, Virginia. You've been in this area for a while. Uh, all my life. All your life. What, what do you think, um, from an arts perspective, um, where, where is the city going as far as art? You see it as becoming more prevalent or lost? I think that the art in this particular area, the DMV, is more um, I would say European driven. The African American artist struggles day to day. We try to more or less do things that reflect our life and our lifestyle, but it's not relevant to European life or lifestyle. So basically, an artist is the voice or the eyes and the ears of the community. Right. If they don't accept our artwork, then we are deaf, dumb, and blind. Yeah. Hi, Carmen TV. All right, what do you do exactly, Miss Carmen? Okay, well, I'm a designer. I'm an artist. I design custom clothes, one-of-a-kind pieces okay. for men and women, unisex pieces as well. I also do canvas artwork. I debuted my artwork here at the Art Avenue of the National Harbor tonight for Lance Everett's event, so I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So, from canvas artwork, to, to, to actual pieces of clothing that you wear. Is that totally different or is it the same because it's art? What do you think? Okay, so what I do with my artwork is I bring fashion to art and I bring art to fashion. Gotcha. So with my canvas art, I'll use materials on the canvas like denim, okay. I'll use cotton, I'll use different tie-dye techniques and paint. And then with the clothes, I use paint on the clothes. Gotcha. So it kind of crosses both worlds right. into one of another, right. but it all follows the theme of an abstract feel. Mm -hmm. So it's no real perfect way to do it, and it makes every piece one of a kind. Gotcha, gotcha. So what made you want to get into the whole creation uh, zone and realm? What made you get there? Um, I've always been a very creative person. I've been very expressive. I have a lot of creatives in my family. So, I mean, it's something I've always done. Right. Now I'm older and I know business better. Mm -hmm. I just do it in a certain structure. So, it makes sense now. Is it hard to juggle between being a creative and a businesswoman at the same time? It's very hard to struggle between the two because when you're a creative, you have like a really abstract mind. Like you could be here today and here tomorrow. You could be in the room, but your mind's out of the room. Right. You have a lot of thoughts going on at one time. So being so creative, but then having to be business and be grounded and be structured, it can sometimes collide because the song we used tonight was Rockstar, and that definitely describes me sometimes, right. which is definitely against the grain when it comes to certain business morals and ethics. But I believe in embracing that because that's what makes doing business actually fun. That's a plug. That's a plug. That's a plug. That's a plug. With my boy, the plug himself, Move is about it. The collaboration is coming.
long story short, I just want to put in a simple plug for y'all. Put me one time. Hey. Man, shout out to That's a Plug. Make sure y'all tune in, subscribe, and catch the wave while you can. <laughs>